Hello loves, hello, hello. Hills here from the blue flame. How are we? It has been quite a couple of weeks since we last spoke. I have personally moved from one coast of the United States in North Carolina, and now I'm all the way on the other side of the country in Washington State. I'm at a grid point called Soap Lake, which is a really powerful, really powerful elemental area here in the U.S. It's a place where minerals gather and gather and gather and gather from a collection of lakes in central eastern Washington that were formed at the end of the last ice age. It's really, really amazing, beautiful elemental energy. I've never experienced the, the level of strength from the elemental kingdom as I have in this place, actually. It's, it's quite remarkable. <laughs> this is kind of perfect location, actually, also, for the conversation that we're going to have today, which is about tomorrow's Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. It's exact tomorrow on the 20th of April. It runs, Jupiter and Uranus will run together in conjunction through the full moon on the 23rd, and as Mercury turns back around on the 27th, or sorry, on the 24th. On the 27th, there's big stuff happening as well, which is why that date came out. That is the day that Sedna, the asteroid named Sedna, which has a 10,000 year orbit, shifts from Taurus into Gemini. We'll get there. We'll get there, I promise. Sedna is a very powerful aspect of this current cycle. So what we're going to talk about today is this conjunction, yes, Uranus and Jupiter's conjunction is powerful magic, and it's one of the most powerful activation points of this entire year. It's not working in isolation, though, right? It's working in union with the eclipses that we just moved through and with the full moon that kind of helps us release any residual debris that got kicked up as we moved through that powerful transform transformational portal of the Libra and Aries eclipses, in particular that Aries solar eclipse, which I was in Arkansas for and there was some powerful light that moved through into, into the earth grid. One of the things, and this feels important to talk about, to speak to, <clears throat> one of the things that happens when a massive influx of light comes in, as came in during that solar eclipse, is that it kicks up a lot. There can be a lot of purgation following such an intense activation of light. Light and shadow work together. So anything that you weren't looking at, anything that you weren't looking at, that you were kind of, I'm going to keep that over here on many, many levels, will have had that eclipse straight in to. And you may have noticed in the, in the week and a half or so since the eclipse, you have been asked to release a lot. This could have come in many different forms. I'll speak for myself. In the days following the eclipse, in the week in particular following the eclipse, I was driving through the states called Oklahoma and Kansas and Nebraska and Wyoming. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm going to take a sip of water. I left it a little far away from myself. 
Mm. <clears throat> All right, let's go back to that. So I found myself driving through, in particular, we're going to talk about Kansas and Nebraska. And during the journey through these two states, as I'm driving down the road, country roads, freeways, wherever it may be, massive windstorms were flowing through, a clearing of energy. As this was happening, I would have rising up from the grid, up through my Earth star, which was traveling at great speed. I mean, great speed, 75 miles an hour, <laughs> sometimes. But rising up through my Earth star, this massive rage, grief from the elemental kingdom. And it came up and through, and I was really happy I was in the car by myself because sometimes it was just a massive scream. A massive scream. Sometimes it was tears, sometimes it was a howl. Uh, but it was just rolling through my system, rolling and rolling and rolling through my system. And I was being asked to be a vessel. This is part of what it means to be a grid worker, right? Sometimes you're asked to be a vessel for the elemental expression. One of the things that I also understood, and this is an important aspect, is that the reason that I could be that vessel is because it was hitting on places where I was feeling the same emotion, where the same energy was stuck in me. And so we gifted each other, the elementals and I were gifting each other with this release, with this release. One of the, let's, let's bring some astrology in here. One of the aspects of this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, and it's something that's going to stay active through the year, though some of the players will change, or through the, through the month, though some of the players will change, is that we have an Earth Grand Trine that's formed during this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction with Jupiter and Uranus. Now, Jupiter and Uranus are not alone as they join together. They have Sekhmet and Hathor, with them, the asteroids named for. And then we have Sedna, which during this conjunction and the full moon is still at 29 degrees of Taurus. Now, I'm gonna get some, some degree stuff going here because we there's some fun fixed star stuff that we get to play with also. Jupiter and Uranus are going to come into their exact conjunction at 21 degrees of Taurus. They're going to move together into 22 degrees of Taurus before Jupiter starts to separate off from Uranus because Jupiter moves faster. During this conjunction, we have Sekhmet at 23, Hathor at 24, and the aforementioned Sedna at 29. There are two stars that are really close here at the very end of Taurus and the very beginning of Gemini. One is Algol, which is in the Perseus con constellation, and in particular is the location where Perseus is holding the severed head of Medusa, and Algol sits where her third eye is. Reclaimed sight. Reclaimed sight. Empowered sight. These are some of the energies that Algol holds. Previously demonized sight is another one because Algol was, is, is sometimes referred to as the demon star because it eclipses itself. And so it appears to disappear from the sky every couple of weeks or so. The other star there at zero degrees of Gemini 
is Alcyon, which is the great central star of the Pleiades, which means that <clears throat> all throughout here, we also have the seven sisters, all of the stars of the Pleiades. So they are being very strongly activated during this conjunction, Algol in particular during the conjunction, and then as we move and Sedna tips over from the 29 of Taurus into the zero of Gemini, Sedna is working in concert with Alcyon. Let me feel how we want to bring this in. There is a lot in the mythos of Sedna. Sedna is an Inuit goddess. She is the goddess of the underworld, of the sea, sometimes called seal woman. Like Osiris, she was dismembered. She was cut into pieces and cast into the water by her father rather than by her brother, but still a dismembering occurred. Now, interestingly, during this conjunction of Jupiter and Uranus, we have Osiris in Capricorn at the 29 degree, which means that Sedna and Osiris, these two dismembered kings and queens, these lords of the underworld, are actually trying to one another. And as we move to the full moon, Osiris, who moves much faster than Sedna, Sedna has a 10,000 year orbit, tips over into the early degrees, into the zero and then the first degree of Aquarius coming into union with another lord of the underworld, Pluto. As Sedna shifts from the 29 of Taurus into the zero of Gemini, she activates the trine with Pluto. So what does this mean? Shadows revealed. Empowerment through the conscious recognition of our demons through the conscious recognition of our demons, through giving them voice. One of the things that we forget is that that which we often call demons, that which we demonize, are simply aspects of our being that have been screaming for attention and stuck in a trauma loop. And as we ignore and ignore and ignore, they get angrier and angrier and they start throwing things around. Temper tantrums. So if we go to a portal, if we go to a, a location or to a house and it's haunted or the land seems cursed, part of what we're connecting into is a place where something really traumatic occurred. Sometimes it's a guardian of the land was murdered there and never released from their vow to steward that land. And as they watch over generations and generations and generations, nobody paying attention to their being, they get angrier and angrier. And they start to throw things around. They say, if you're not gonna pay attention to me, I'm gonna make you pay attention to me. This can also occur in a house or with a portal with a vortex site, there's a lot of places in like Sedona in particular, all over the, all over the planet, but we'll single out Sedona. Sure. Why not? Where breaches have occurred in the grid in some way or another, and a trauma loop continues to repeat signs of great battles, wars, 
can have this as well if the energy is not recognized and witnessed and allowed to move. It becomes stuck. People get stuck in trauma loops as well. Just like, just like people get stuck in trauma loops, the earth gets stuck in trauma loops, the solar system can get stuck in a trauma loop. Every, you know, as within, so without, as above, so below. These axioms are true and far reaching as well as our cells can get stuck in a trauma loop. Um, I was diagnosed many years ago, now a, couple, a few years ago anyways, with something called MCAS, mast cell activation syndrome. This is a form of a trauma loop, a toxin, a poison to my system, an allergen, keeps getting put into my system and as I continue to be exposed to this toxin, my mast cells, the inventory of my immune system, started to scream louder and louder and louder. And then finally it took just a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a similar flavor of a similar energy that my system had been reacting to and I would go into full-blown reaction because my mast cells had gotten so stuck in this loop and I had to do a hard reset. I had to do, well, many soft resets would be a better way to put it. And that is actually where we are right now. We, on the earth, are moving through a series of soft resets so, so that we can try and avoid the massive cataclysms of the past when we come into this evolutionary cycle that we're currently navigating. <laughs> so, <laughs> Earth Grand Trine during this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. I've mentioned you know, Sekhmet. Sekhmet is also a demon slayer as well as courageous in power. So we can feel through this that part of what we're accessing is a capacity to come into courageous witnessing of our demons. This is Taurus energy too. So it's where we are connected to the earth how we are connected to the earth, how we create in concert with the earth. For many, many generations, our relationship with the earth has been dominion over. Dominion over. We are being shifted now back into a in concert with. In concert with. Creating not through a power over structure, but through community. And this is part of that Libra South node. We need to also clean up some of the ways we've abused in our relationships. Power, creation magic. The, the big piece that I kept hearing when I was allowing all of that emotion from the elementals and from deep within me to move through as I traveled through Kansas and Nebraska in particular was exploitation. Where have we exploited others for our own gain? Where have we exploited our gifts for our own gain that was not in the service to all, that was not in the highest good, that was not actually our truth? but because we were told this is what success looks like. This, was, this is what it looks like when you're manifesting properly. Right. All right, so the other aspects of this grand trine, we haven't even gotten to the full moon yet. The other aspects of this grand trine are in, in fact the moon over in Virgo, which is conjunct black moon Lilith, which is conjunct Sophia in retrograde. Sophia in retrograde 
in Virgo is wholeness, gnosis, wisdom, internal. Coming into a internal dialogue. Coming into a recognition of the gnosis, the body wisdom that we have. Listening to, like I had to listen to my math cells, listening to the messages that we're receiving from our bodies. And then we have Black Moon Lilith. Black Moon Lilith, the primordial feminine, that from which all is created, that black serpent, that primordial ooze from which we all emerged. And then the moon. The moon is there with Black Moon Lilith. They are very tightly conjunct. And it feels important to connect with this energy, with Luna, with our unconscious realms. That this energy that the moon represents is in trine with Jupiter and Uranus as the sun comes into Taurus just days before the moon shifts into Scorpio and sits exactly opposite the sun, bringing our full moon in. It's as if our unconscious is connecting to our body wisdom, to that primordial ooze from which we all emerged and saying, see me, remember me, remember me, remember me, remember me. And then we come into the full moon and we bring the sun and the moon into this and we can reveal, that's what Scorpio's energy is. So we have all that, <laughs> We have all this energy of Sedna and Osiris and Pluto working together over the course of this week, two weeks, through the end of the month, really. And as we are in this energy, we get our full moon in Scorpio. So the full moon shining a bright light into those shadowy realms. Scorpio has that underworld energy, but it's so much more, you know, the energy of Scorpio is, let me show you, let me show you how you really feel. Help, let me help you to feel those things that you have been avoiding. Let me help you to feel those things that you have been avoiding. Of the water signs, it is the deepest of the groundwater. Sometimes people can feel it as a stagnant water. This water outside this cabin that I'm sitting in right now, it is the last, the southernmost lake in a series of lakes and all of the volcanic energy, all of the deep minerality of all of these lakes that were formed as the ice dams broke and gushes, surges of water ripped through forming the Scablands of Washington. And all of this minerality, all of this earth essence, all of these elements come into this pool of water and it does not have an outlet. It gathers and it sits. And it is act, it's called soap lake because it actually foams soap. And if you rub your hair in it, your hair in the water lathers. And the mud is dark black with glitters of gold. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful symbolism of what Scorpio actually is, of what Black Moon Lilith represents, what the underworld journey 
represents is going into that deepest, richest loam and accessing all of those flakes of gold, all that glittering light that's within them. That is what's on offer during this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. That is what's on offer during this full moon. And as Sedna moves and shifts from the end of Taurus into the beginning of Gemini. I mentioned Alcyon. Alcyon is very connected to elemental energy. The Pleiades, many channelers of the Pleiadian energy, they, they channel mostly the love, 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 energy of the Pleiades. And that is absolutely part of who they are. That is part of the energy template that they hold. But they are also death doulas. They bring life and they bring death. They rise to their highest point in the sky, in the northern hemisphere when we reach Halloween. And they meet in conjunction with the sun as we go into spring. Feel how dual in nature that is. But it is more than duality. It is all-encompassing. All-encompassing. A valuing and an honoring of all of the stages of existence, of beingness. A knowing and a gnosis that the soul is so much bigger, so much vaster than a single human incarnation or even longer incarnations than that. A single stellar incarnation. The soul is so much vaster than even that. This is part of the gift of Sedna. A planetary body, a cosmic body, that travels all the way out to the farthest reaches of our solar system, to the Oort cloud, over the course of a 10,000 year orbit, returns back with all of this information gathered through its long journey, and then leaves again to go see what's next, to go see what's next. <laughs> Sirius is also involved, it behooves me to say, during the conjunction as well as the full moon and as Sedna shifts into Gemini as, Siri, as Osiris moves over into conjunction with Pluto and Aquarius. Sirius is being activated by Medusa. Medusa is traveling in union with Vesta and has been for a while. They have now entered Cancer. <laughs> and this is part of an energy that is a cardinal grand cross. We've talked a lot, and this video is getting pretty long, so I'm going to try and give this concisely. But we'll see where the energies take us, right? This is part of a Cardinal Grand Cross. We've talked a lot about the underworld journey that we are going through. Part of the Pluto and Aquarius energy is shadow work available to all. It is trauma reconciliation. Trauma reconciliation. Remembering the truth of who we are. The whole truth of who we are which means looking at beautiful, joyous past lives and the so pretty past lives and all of the places that we have gone so that we can say, oh, I can see how that played out. I don't need to get lost in it. I don't need to re-fully experience every aspect of it, but I do need to acknowledge that it exists so that I can move forward. 
and not have to trauma loop it or pass it down to the next generation. I can hold it and see, oh, I can see where my grandmother had this experience and then my mother had this experience and then I started to have this experience, but I was here to transmute it. So I said no more. So my niece doesn't have to have that experience. When people touch into karma is going away in the new earth, this is part of what they're touching into. This is that Virgo energy also. We have all that Virgo energy right now. It is. It stops with me. And it does not get passed down to the next generation. The next generation comes in with their own stuff that they're here to work on. Sure. But they aren't needing to transmute my stuff because I'm doing that work. And we all flow it back down the line. We all flow it back down the line. So we've talked a lot about that energy in this video. This is also initiatory energy that we're moving into. We're moving into the new, we're birthing the new through this transmutation, through the embracing of our shadows. This new is <laughs> vibrant. It's vibrant. It's reclaimed. It's empowered. We have Vesta, the eternal flame, and Medusa, working with Sirius, that diamond consciousness light. Working with the rose dragons, Empowered compassion and detached service. These four all in cancer, the sign of belonging. Belonging. Hmm. We don't have to ostracize or other due to our own wounding. We can embrace and we can feel our belonging. This is working in concert over in Aries in a square with Chiron, which during this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction and the full moon is conjunct with Venus, with Magdalena, with the retrograde Mercury and the North Node. All of these energies, which were such a part of our eclipse, our Aries solar eclipse in particular, are still working together. The sun has moved on. Mercury's moved back. <laughs> During this particular conjunction and the full moon, Mercury is retrograding to its final retrograde point, which is right on the north node, just a degree off. And will then, the day after the full moon, on the 24th, turn around and start moving forward, bringing all of that internal expression back out. Back out. A full I am. And bringing that to Magdalena, to Chiron, to Venus, so that we can confront, it's coming in to use that word, confront, those places where we have minimized ourselves, where we have apologized for existing, where we have said, I just need to be a little bit smaller, I just need to be a little bit more quiet, I just need to be a little bit more in this shadow, a little more hidden. Chiron and Aries, so that we can embrace the gift of shining our whole light, huh. stretching out, being seen, saying, hey, I'm here. This is me. I'm not going to apologize for it. This is who I am. Now, that does not mean throwing your shit all over everyone. There's a difference. It's 
this is the truth of who I am. Not let me throw all my trauma all over you. It's I have looked at myself. I have found this truth of who I am. And I'm going to share that with the world. I'm going to share that with the world. This is the new that we are birthing. This is the new that we are birthing. Then over in Capricorn, we have Isis and Ixion, who we've talked a lot about in the last couple of videos. I'm not going to go super deep, but let's remember that Isis is part of the remembering, creation, birthing the new. Isis helped remember Osiris when he was dismembered with the help of his son from her sister, Anubis. Through this reconciliation and remembering, through raising and nurturing that which another might have othered, the son of your husband by your sister, you can come into a state of forgiving that which might seem unforgivable, hello Ixion, and bring more wholeness, birth something new through this union. The remembered Osiris and Isis are able to couple, creating the divine child Horus. Reclaimed sight, reclaimed emotions, whole unto selfness. Then we have Ceres, goddess of the harvest, the planter of seeds and the reaper of sowing, that which you harvest after a planting. And this is where we're coming into. This is, this is the stage that we're entering now. We have been planting seeds. We have been planting seeds. We have been planting seeds. And it's time now to start to bring in some of the fruits of our labors. Some of the fruits of our labors. Then, of course, in Libra, we have the South Node. Coming into a claiming of that which we truly value. And with Venus as part of this Chiron conjunction across the way, Venus ruler of Libra, Venus's rulership of Libra is what do we value in relationship? What do we find luxurious in our being? We'll leave that there. Who wants to just be left right there? What do we find luxurious in our being? As we move through the month of April into the beginning of May, Venus will come into Taurus, which is the sign that she, the other sign that she rules. And in this place, it's coming into an embodied, an embodied state of love, of loving of body, of loving of body, of our embodied form. And this is something that a lot of us, especially star seeds, have a hard time with is that loving of embodied form. If we spend all of our time trying to get back to where we came from and we don't honor the where we are, this embodied form, what we are here to do, the bringing of light into the embodied form becomes harder. But if we can really get into our roots, into our sacrums, into the sacro Taurus field and activate and remember that, we are able to call even more divine light. And that's what this is all about. 
calling even more divine light. Our true light, our true nature into the embodied form and then getting to see what it looks like when that's expressed in this world, in a material world, in, in a physical space. <laughs> Let me feel if there's any more that wants to be shared in this moment. The biggest piece that, that really feels loud right now is simply to say that The idea of shadow work can be scary for, for a lot of people. We hear that term and we want to run and hide under the covers. It doesn't have to be. And it doesn't necessarily look any certain way. Your shadow work may be going to a concert and dancing your ass off, sweating and howling and just being embodied and letting anything that needs to release from you release. That can be shadow work. It doesn't have to be puking in a bucket, though it can be. You can do shadow work watching a movie if you allow and intend that that which you resonate with in this space. I spent a period of my life using lots of different drugs, including cocaine. Then in 2020 or 2021, I watched the show on Netflix, Narcos. And I realized that part of the reason that I was watching this was to help me alchemize that, that part of myself that was part of that story. You see, it doesn't always seem, it doesn't always look like what we think it's going to look like. I got to sit with my husband and watch a TV show and I got to alchemize that. We can do this in ways that flow that are not necessarily extraordinarily painful. It can be uncomfortable still, of course. Like, I'm not going to pretend that I wasn't uncomfortable as it was happening. I'm not going to pretend that howling as I'm driving through Kansas wasn't uncomfortable. But a kundalini activation is also uncomfortable, right? All of a sudden, it's like somebody's tickling you or something inside your spine. Part of being embodied, part of having a physical body is sensation. Sometimes they feel amazing and sometimes they are a little less comfortable. But part of what we are doing, and this is part of the half hour's magic, is a remembering that it's all sensation. The only thing that makes it good or bad is our identifying it as such. <laughs> and that's where I'm going to leave us because that's a fun place to play. <sighs> Over in the members portal, if it calls for you to come over there, I'm gonna actually be holding a live circle during this full moon from another grid point on the other side of Washington called Hoodsport or the area of the Lake Cushman in the Olympia, Olympic National Forest. Um, this is actually, I'm gonna be leaving in a couple of hours here and heading that way, stopping at Mount Rainier and Think a place called Twin Sisters, which is at the very bottom of this uh, Scablands area that I'm currently in. I've been sharing a lot more about the journey over there as well, so if that calls to you, you can come on over, check out the Patreon, 
you can join as a, as a free community member or you can become part of the working circle. There's a couple of different membership options for that. Let me know in the comments how this is showing up for you. All, that We're in some really amazing energy right now. And one of the things that is the most true that I can access in this moment is that it will be showing up for each and every one of us in a very unique way. Uranus is involved, of course it will. And so I'm really curious, how, how is it showing up for you? Are you being asked to release a lot? And if so, what does that look like? We show others the way by sharing our experience. It's one of the reasons I share so much about my personal experience in these videos with us. If you've not already subscribed and it calls, I would love to have you subscribe. Like the video if that calls. All of the things, you know, you know all of the things. And as always, in the always, from, through, and beyond the all dimensions. So much and many loves to you all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.